is January 9th, 2024. I'll tell you what, it's probably about 1230 at night. And I came home and that car is sitting at the top of the thing. And even I pulled in at different times and it was sitting up there. With its headlights on. And even the neighbors have said something. I don't know what their problem is. And the stocking thing that's going on here. And I'll tell you what. Uh, they're, like they said, they're all getting aware of people driving by slowly by my apartment. Staring at me. Um, at my apartment. Or sitting up there watching me walk in. This stocking thing that people are doing for the drug dealers. They need to cut it out. 100% cut it out. Cut it out. Seriously, cut it out. You know, on December 31st, 23, a week ago Sunday, okay, I was in Altman Hospital. All right, inside Altman Hospital in the emergency room. One of the officers assigned to me with a guy walked by. Now, before they walked by, the room that I'm sitting in. Uh, some nurses walked by and said, uh, those people were even lying that a doctor from Altman Hospital was going to back them. We got told, everyone in this hospital, that nobody ever better back one of the, what those doctors said about her before. My God, they even lied she had brain tumors i know they were lying on everything and not we all got and that we could that the hospital could get sued and not one person's ever to back one thing those doctors said before because they were all lying well right after that the cops walked by guys talking to this other guy said they all lied on her before he said yeah he said uh um it was medication errors that made her sick before. We all know none of this is funny. See, they were running around telling people that Altman Hospital is so dirty that one of their doctors was breaking HIPAA violations, giving out personal information, was going to help people go after people. And da 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 They made it all. It was none of their doctors. Just like... The guy that raped and tortured me, they told him, he told everybody he was FBI. He was a drug dealer. See, I talked to a real agent, badgered the hell out of me. Bullied the hell out of me, opened a real case. And left me up there to die and took my money. Huh? There's him. But the drug dealers, that's where even my one neighbor I was talking to him. He used to go to Faith Family Church with me. I said, you know all those people... That were there said they were working my case and they were FBI. I said, yeah. He said, do you know the only ones that are that were working the case with the Stark County Sheriff's? He's like, that's fucked up, Karen. I told other people. Do you know all those people that said they were FBI working my case? Yeah. They were all FBI. They wouldn't know you wouldn't have known they were there. Oh <gasps> I said they were drug dealers. Anybody knows who they are, tell them to tell the police. They're drug dealers impersonating him. See what I mean? Just like they were lying that they were a doctor from Altman Hospital. Gonna go along with false diagnoses and da 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 da. And was sharing my information with other people. It was an actor. Or her an actor. Or whoever it was. There was no one from Altman. Like those nurses said. We were told that there was a doctor. Supposed to be a doctor here back at them. We were told no one is to ever back one thing those doctors said. They're all lying. Hmm? My God, they even said that she had brain tumors. I know. We could all, the hospitals could get sued. Oh, the hospital could get shut down. See, there's a point in time. If the hospital is breaking HIPAA violations, right to privacy violations, and they're sharing people's information with everybody on the streets, the, the state will shut them down. Hmm? Or they'll give it hundreds of million dollars worth of fines. Hmm? See what I mean? 
The state will take care of them. See where they said that we, the hospital could get sued. Oh, the hospital not only could get sued liable and civilly from me, but the state would shut them down. Or the state would go in there and find the hell out of them for right to privacy, HIPAA violations. Hmm? And then a whole bunch more. And ethics and everything else. And they would get sued so bad from the state and everybody else. See, there's rights to privacy. They were lying that a doctor from there was helping out. Could you imagine they actually said that? That's where that cop behind, behind him said that those doctors were lying on her before. I said, yeah. It was a medication error that made her sick. It's a medicine making her sick. We all know now this is funny. It's documented medication error 2002. 2002. Medical malpractice. They actually have a name for what those doctors did to me. It's called overcare. 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 I went up to a client's house and they said, uh, these people with good insurance, they're having problems with overcare. And I looked up and I'm like, what? And they said, uh, they are getting sent to doctors. They don't need to. They're falsely diagnosing them, giving the wrong medicine, making them sick, and then wanting to do unnecessary procedures. They call it over. It's called overcare. And... These people with little to no insurance are actually living healthier lives because they only go to the doctor when they need to. And these other ones are just abusing their insurance. That's what they did to me when they called it the Golden Ticket Insurance Company. That I need to get an attorney and sue them for medical malpractice. And the medicine was making me sick and there was nothing wrong with me, but my muscles locked up from all the surgeries and all the swelling and everything quit working and um, was caused by the wrong medications and to get off the, all that medicine and uh, get out moving, you'll be fine. I had to get with a doctor, strong enough pain medicine to move locked hard muscles and slowly learn to walk again over nine months. And as the swelling left, my brain swelling went down, my heart started working fine, my thyroid and adrenal gland. I was dying from medical malpractice. They almost killed me. They wanted to do brain surgery on me, remove part of my brain, and there was nothing wrong with it but swelling caused by their medication. They were going to put a bag on my side because my stomach was bleeding from all their meds. Got off their meds, my stomach stopped bleeding. They almost killed me. Yeah. And it took me. And they encouraged my, me and my ex-husband for two years to sue him. The, all my family physicians told the police it was a documented medication error the first month of the case. It was already in my file since 2002. They even said it in front of my husband on purpose. He always blamed the steroids, uh, but they had you on so many medication, hard to tell them which one or the combination thereof caused all that swelling. Good thing you got off and got on high doses, of, uh, got on pain medicine, got out moving. It's a medication error that made you sick. Back then, I called it flat-out medical malpractice. There's a name for it. It's called overcare. It's like an overkill. But they even had these people, even had somebody pretend to be a doctor from Altman Hospital, breaking all kinds of laws and saying they were going to help them. They had people pretend to be FBI. Uh, and were the drug dealers hurting me. These people are evil. They lie. They have an attorney working with them. They don't have an attorney. Dear God, it's the drug cartel running a drug scam. They Even one of the cops last week, they're still trying to sell me online. This is where it's scary. When the case first started, they said that one guy's trying to sell her online to the highest bidder. I thought you could just be me and then manage her on and say stuff. And I try to get away from it and, and cops would chase him down. And they grab them. I had three show up one time when I was out with my granddaughters. So one of the cops that worked the case said, Will told us to show up today in case one of those idiots were stupid enough to show up to try to buy her. He's still trying to sell me four years later. Okay? See, the, the this is, and even that cop had said, uh, they already told Will, that none of this is funny. That he would even say anything about being anything before. When we all know 
those drug dealers were using her as a pawn to fight over this area. And they already told Will that they already knew that. And it's not funny that he'd even put his name on anything of what those people did before. See, that's where this whole thing, it, it's just a big scam from the drug dealers. See, where Dave was dating Michelle, her family was poor, I found out, extremely poor. And instead of them coming to me, they thought they had to try to trick me into giving me up my house by stalking me, photoshopping me, and roofing me. Tell me to say stuff. They never had to talk to me. They just had to come talk to me. It's called honesty, Pete Michelle. It's called honesty. Just come talk to the person. The result will probably be better if not the same. You never had to lower yourself just because you're poor. You don't have to do crimes. You probably would have married him then. Okay. They pull that cheap stunt of that. That's where Eric repented last week on the fourth. Screamed it up in Forest Grove Drive. Screaming, oh my God, I'm so sorry for everything. Everything's my fault. My God, I'm so sorry. I heard they even took Dave. I'm so sorry. I don't even know how to fix it, but I got to find a way. And my God, they told me what happened. I'm so sorry. People were talking on Walmart and Strip on Sunday, this last Sunday. Actually, yesterday. Actually, now it's two days because it's after midnight. On the 7th, January 7th, that they all heard Eric repent and apologize and confess. People were outside talking about it, too. Another girl was walking around and said, I would have never went out with him after what he let those people do to her. It's ridiculous. Men are walking around me looking at me. And walking by and some ladies like, all oh, those people looking at her. I hope they're not trying to figure a way to kill her. We all know. And, and another lady had walked by before that. Another lady had walked by and said, we heard that we, no, nobody finds any of this funny. We found out they're trying to sell her online. And we already know her ex-husband bought that girl and took off. And now they're trying to do that to her. Other people talking about they figured that Dave, they killed Dave. Okay. I was at Outback before that, and a lady was talking to somebody, said, you know, if Agent Will actually does the right thing, Karen will have her money and her new life. And if he does the right thing by those other people, Nobody else will die. They won't die. Those people will. So he wants to say it's an accessory to murder. The four more people, six more people. Is that what he wants to say? Is a flat out accessory to murder? Premeditated. See, that's sad when she has to say if he does the right thing. Do you know, doing the right thing is integrity. And there's things about police departments. If you, they don't have integrity, you don't have anything. You're a criminal with a badge. You're a criminal with a badge. If you don't have integrity, and you do the right thing at all costs, you don't have respect, you don't have courage, you don't have honor, you don't have justice, because you're not doing the right thing, you're a criminal with a badge. Hmm? You're a criminal with a badge. You're a criminal with a badge. All right, there was a guy in there. I know she don't know who I am. 
I've been down here watching all this. They came down to me to tell me to find out. I've been watching all this. I heard she has them taped. Saying that that agent was going to help them. That he was in their house before. And that they, he was going to lie. I did. I was doing a video. And I was sitting in Walmart parking lot. And some of the mean ladies that were part of the drug dealers were laughing that they were going to get rid of the live form and cackling into the point the tape picked it up. People were laughing at Alliance after that. She finally got him. It took her long enough, but she finally got him. Everybody do the right thing. See, there, the, see this whole thing, like they said, it's a bet between two gentlemen. They're drug lords. One bet that he could make her give up everything in life. And the other one said, and he could have other people help participate in it. The other one said he could be so cruel, he could uh, push her to suicide. Okay? Then they said later on that the orders came down from Strange, that no man was ever to want her again. They were to make sure of it. Uh, they said, um, there, now the cops have recorded this because I'm an FBI informant. I've been under police surveillance for five years, right? Uh, there's a guy, he thinks it's funny trying to kill people. We all know about him. And he thinks it's funny trying to kill people. And the greatest hunt. Is hunting a human being. The greatest of all. Um, and what else do they say about him? He watches her. She amuses him. He watches her for hours. She finds ways out of his tracks. Okay? Um, she found a way. To pay for her divorce, she put it on her credit card. She had no money. She can't afford the apartment she has. And she uh, would rather starve than go back to Dave and let him just kill her. He's amused with her because she won't give up. Um, I had other ones uh, to the way out of his trap is to do the right thing. He's got people watching you to see you make a mistake. No matter if the road, which way the road turns or bends, don't ever step off the right path. Always do the right thing. He's waiting to get you as soon as you make a mistake. Uh, and there was people in the police recorded them that they were following me, trying to find me making a mistake. He blackmails people. That's what he's doing. And everybody that is blackmailing, I want you to be like Officer Reinhardt in the hospital. Repeat after me. I don't care what you say you got. I don't care what you say you did. And that's what he said about the tapes before. Even the FBI would go to jail being in your home outside a protective law case. They can say whatever they want. They could even have something on somebody and they could never use it. It's illegal to be in somebody's home no matter what. It's the Fourth Amendment. Even the FBI would go to jail outside a protective law case with statements and that agent had agreed to protect you. Or they couldn't be in your home. They could, the Department of Justice would put them in jail. So everybody that, that serial killer is blackmailing, Look at him and flat out tell him, I don't care what you say you got. I don't care what you say you did. You're a serial killer. Who cares what you say? And then we need to have a talk, Will and John. Last year, uh, an FBI agent out of state tried to tell an informant they couldn't say anything. Um... And the press ripped him a new one and called for the FBI to be shut down. That they're only higher police departments. They don't have the authority to ask anybody to stay quiet. They're only police officers. It takes a judge in the First Amendment. 
And if they start thinking that there are more than law enforcement and police officers, they need to shut them down. Okay? Because that's all they are. Uh, not demeaning what you do. My brother-in-law died working for the government. And you disgrace his dead name and every good man that died for the government. Now we're going to put it this way. I talked to a criminal attorney, prosecutor's office, and the police. And they all back it. Just like the press did. My unique case, well, you, after I called the hotline and where they drugged me up so bad, you were the one witnessed by the Norton Barberton police telling on me at that apostolic church of Barberton to Paul Pamer. You even were seen and witnessed talking to my ex-husband there with your own confession on the next day on a recorded line. Not only do you badger me into a false statement and act like a little prissy wad, repeating strangest lie of faking you were sick on a documented medication error. Okay, Dr. Med and medical malpractice and bullying me into false statements. You know, that was such a prissy little Tinkerbell lie. Oh, you were four years. It, it, do you realize from the time it started, it like three or four years, time I got well, it took me nine months to learn to walk again. And how dare you repeat a man's lie that he only made up to cover up his son's adultery. And he made it up six months later. And like they said, that family ain't neat. back in 2003, they're going to have to learn to live with the grief of her father killing her kid. Hmm? And they're realizing it. They do need to realize it. And they do need to learn to deal with the grief of her father killing her kid. Do you realize he was going so fast? When he hit that, he blew through that stop sign into that semi, he blew up the vehicle. I did, I was Googling how fast to go. He was going way over 56 on a back road. He was speeding, and he ran a stop sign, and he murdered the kid. They need to learn to deal with it. It's been 20 years, and I didn't even go to their church. Didn't go to their church for years. And they waited 15 years after baby maybe little Tinkerbell wine. Oh, you were faking nearing that six months later. Didn't even have anything to do with that traffic accident. Her father murdered her kid in an arrogant stunt. In the middle of me getting well, after a three-year ordeal of surgeries, false, then false, after surgeries, all my muscles locking up, going to the wrong doctors, a bunch of crackpots almost killed me, then nine months of slowly getting well. In the middle of my ordeal, her father pulls a cheap-ass stunt and kills himself and his kid. Their kid had nothing to do with it. And I, I finally get, well, months later. And then when that minister thought I caught his son in adultery, six months later, made up that baby smaby lie. Little Tinkerbell, oh, you were faking through that. Did that have, like Becky said across the street, that's insanity. For them to even say that, let alone it's insanity for anybody to want to hurt you and try to connect her father killing her kid to somebody just saying something about you and wanting to hurt you. It's insanity. Oh, it's very much insanity. Very much insanity. And a tinkerbell wah, wah, wah. That an insane occult leader made up. And that sick family wanting just to hurt somebody and make up excuses and an FBI agent backing a Tinkerbell wham, wham, wham. Why? Huh? That was made up by an occult leader? Huh? Now, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that, Will and John. Like Officer Mark is a tall white guy with white hair. Over my case, told the lady August 22nd or 23rd or 23, it's documented medication error that made her sick before, and it's documented some other woman was using her insurance. They're like, none of that is funny. He said, I know it's not. Hmm? And it's documented she was framed before. Now, I'm going to tell you what. You flat out said on a recorded line that you met with the faggots, you met with the church people, you knew 
They were trying to kill me because of that pathetic wah, wah, wah lie. Huh? Wah lie. That a minister made up 15 years before. I didn't even go to their church. They had to hunt me down. 15 years later. I didn't even go to their church for years. They had to hunt me down. You talk about six son of a bitches. I didn't even go to their church. Think about that. You better chew on that a little bit. And that agent back in a wham, 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 pat, pathetic little Tinkerbell lie. It wasn't even a juicy lie. It was a Tinkerbell lie. Oh, I could be really cruel and call it a bunch of other names. And I'll tell you what. And you said, you tried to blame me for all their hurt and grief. Who caused them hurt and grief? Strange lying on me that that was faking? Uh, which makes them just retards to believe it? It had nothing to do with her father murdering her kid and speeding into and running a stop sign and killing himself and his or their son. And an arrogant, stupid act of speeding and running a stop sign. In the middle of me getting well and going through my own thing, I didn't have anything to do with them. And see, trying to say I caused them hurt and grief. Hmm? Where did strange lying on me hurt them at all? It didn't. They lied to you. You admitted you had them in their office. And you admitted you had the church people. And you admitted you knew some guy named Pete was taping me unaware and doing stuff. And you didn't arrest him for sex extortion and stalking. And how he was framing me. And how I didn't know. And I didn't know. And you didn't arrest him. And you didn't do your sworn duty. That you would uphold the law and the Constitution for every U.S. citizen. You broke the law. And see, that's where officers out of this area want to know why our local police haven't arrested you. Because you're just another cop and they are not submittable to you. They're just all police officers and it's where they can work. It's right on Google. The only thing difference between a local officer and an FBI agent is they can work anywhere in the United States and local works local. They're all equal police officers. Do you understand? That's all they are. Now, do I think you're funny repeating, oh, why am I? And then threaten to leave me up there and let them kill me? I happen to know somebody that their husband they're married to now is a very nice man, what I can tell of him. But when he was a little 17, 18 year old kid, came home. His sister's dying on the floor, cut up and raped. With her dying breath, told him what bastard did it to her. He knew him. Of all things, he knew him. Ran out of the house, hunted him down. He beat him to death. He beat the motherfucker to death for killing his sister. He got 20 years. Why? Because he can't become a murderer himself. To me, that's a metal snap. Maybe not 20 years. To me, that would be a metal. Because that's not something you would do on a normal basis. So why would the Vegas and the Apostolics be allowed to kill me? Because somebody made up a Tinkerbell lie on me. That had nothing to do with them. Exactly. And I'm telling you, you owe me my money. And I've told the Department of Justice, the CIA, and the FBI headquarters, and like people have said around me the last few days, nobody has say a word to you. Nobody finds it funny that any police would steal from any victim for any reason. And like the criminal attorney, they owe you that money. 
for work in the case. They cannot ask you to stay quiet. They cannot put restrictions on it as for working the case and the money and immunity only. That's what the prosecutor's office told me. That's what it says on Google and what a criminal attorney said. See, I, I want Will and John, like that lady said, well, actually does the right thing, Karen will live. Hmm? She'll have her money, her new life. He does the right thing, but even by those other people, they'll all live. Will you, FBI, will FBI agent John in Canton, Ohio? Do you want to say your accessory to about five murders? I already blame you for my house manager's niece. It's death. Because where I told you that guy tried to kill me, tried to kidnap me and called me a liar. Guess what happened to her niece within four months of my case starting well? Because you wouldn't listen to me. He killed her niece. So whose fault is it she's dead? It's yours. It's yours for not doing your damn job and your sworn duty. She's dead, and it's your fault. He had a high bounty on his head, I found out through my co-worker, Lori. He had dismembered her family member and killed her and laughed in, her, in their face how they murdered her. And there was a big reward for information how to find her. And I was telling you, and you were so busy calling me a liar, and yelling at me about a Tinkerbell lie that a minister made up, and you knew they were trying to kill me for it. And you actually said you didn't blame them for a Tinkerbell lie made up 15 years before. You need to turn your badge in, and somebody needs to take it away from you and stomp it into a million pieces because you are not a cop. You are not a federal agent. You are a criminal hiding behind a badge. And I'll tell you what, when Pete walked into that office and confessed, you do realize that man blackmailed him. Like all the cops said, why did why why did all these people lying on her? Why why did they do those things to her before? Well, that family was so poor. Everybody felt sorry for him, so they made up all that stuff on her. And they did all those things to her trying to help that family that was so poor. So you would know Pete was that poor. So who would walk into a Federal Bureau of Investigators, a police department, and confess to crimes? Nobody. An insane man? Paid off Patsy? That's willing to go to jail for an excessive amount of money? Or a black? that they either got their family held captive or they're going to do something to them. If they don't go in and tell where they had done that cheap-ass stunt to me, trying to trick me out of my house for their daughter because they were poor. Cartel found out one that cheap stunt to run up as a pawn. Blackmailed him. So why didn't Will do his sworn duty? His sworn duty to arrest him. Why didn't he very at least take Pete off by himself and said, I'll tell you what. We'll put it this way. I'm going to either put you in jail for your confession of your crimes or you're going to work for me and you can be an informant and you give me the name of the man that gave you that money to come bribe me. And because I got you for life in federal otherwise. Otherwise, you get 60 grand a year and all housing, living, and, and immunity. And you just got to get me. You would have took the deal, Will. And then you could have helped me and got me out of here, too. Why didn't you do the right thing, Will? Why didn't you do what the law requires you to do in your sworn duty, Will? Hmm? See, that guy that gave him the money they said he's banking everything that nobody could do the right thing the 
that's a word for bedding. And you know what? Well, like the blackmail people. Is he blackmailing you? Hmm? Is he blackmailing you? Because you could always turn it around on him real quick. You did it to get the fentanyl king, the guy impersonating the prince, and about, oh, a thousand bad guys. And then look at him and say, I don't care what you got. I got you. See, you can either do the right thing, but you do realize they sold the log in nationwide. And everybody's looking at the FBI. And like the Louisville children said, the FBI betrayed her. Mennonite children in New Philly. Okay? The FBI let her live through all that and didn't even pay her. I know none of this is funny. Hmm? Teenagers in North Canton, the FBI made fun of her for being human trafficked. The FBI made fun of her for being drug beat and raped. And because they were using amnesia drugs, she didn't know what was happening to her. They need to take care of those idiots. I've had other people even say, you know, the police should have took care of it. And they should have took and got her out of here. Maybe we should move from here. See, what I want you to do, well, I want my money, new name, I don't, and I want you to take care of Pete and Michelle, where Eric apologized. Michelle's been running around since September 3rd telling everybody that everything was photoshopped. She was even out in North Canton behind my client's uh, apartment and was telling everybody the worst thing she ever did wrong was bend over improperly and then was in the back of her knees. She's a really nice lady, and they drugged and photoshopped and made everything up on me before. That's called integrity. And like Eric repenting it and begging, he didn't have to beg my forgiveness. It was greatly appreciated. And I want you to give him all immunity and get all the information of these people and then just go hide them before they come back and kill them. Because if they've killed Dave, that guy, he thinks it's funny killing people. They'll be like Marlisa's niece and Lori's family member. They'll just disappear. If you don't get him out of here, he'll come back and kill him. Get him out of here. Find out who gave him the money. And if it's not the exact person, they'll be linked to him. You pull the case, you'll actually find the serial killer. Because they talk about him around the cops. And they record him. The only way to beat him is to do the right thing. And he don't think you have integrity. He don't think you obey the law. He don't think you're an honest man. And he's banking on you being dishonest. Chew on that one. Everybody go online and turn this in. He's betting, the, they said that he's betting that no one will do the right thing. Prove the serial killer wrong. That's how you stop him. Do the right thing.